Jim Jeffries as Marion Kirby, the ghostess with the mostest. Robert Sterling as George Kirby, that most sportive spirit. And Leo G. Carroll, host to said ghost as... Topper. Oh, Mr. Topper, did you have a nice game, sir? Incredible. Is the top at home? Yes, sir. She's upstairs. On the phone, I think, sir. May I make you a nice hot cup of tea, sir? Well, that'll be very nice, Katie. Eight to five, you can't sink it, George. Hmm. Still with my eyes closed. Mary, you cheated. You moved the hole. You cheated. You had your eyes open. Stop it, both of you. George, put that putter bag in the bag. Marion, pick up that ball. You heard what the man said, George. Put that away. <laughs> what harm am I doing? You seem to forget that while only I can see and hear both of you, your odd manifestations are perfectly visible to all and sundry. I spend half my life explaining away these phenomena. In the bag. How'd you do that? Uh, oh, uh, just a uh, mind of a matter. A little practice. Anyone can do it. Let me see you do it again. Yeah. Let's see. Well, not now, Katie. I'm a little exhausted after my golf. And um, it's, um, it's rather a strain on my, um, my ledger domain. He won't get up, Topper. He loves it. He won't, won't he? All right, I'll sit on him. Are you comfortable, Mr. Topper? Like that, I mean? Oh, yes. Form of yoga, known as the lotus position. Extremely relaxing. I can sit like this all day. Here, Neil. Dark on. Exactly. <laughs> What's new, Topper? Uh, aren't you going to thank us for helping you out in the golf course today? No, I am not. They'll probably throw me out of the club, thanks to you. Well, they can't throw you out of the club for nine birdies, two eagles, and three holes in one. <laughs> just doesn't look legitimate for a man with a 33 handicap. Well, personally, I wouldn't belong to a club that was that suspicious. Now, please, go away and let me rest and read in peace. He wants to rest in peace, George. So who's stopping him? Cosmo. What's the matter, Cosmo? Isn't that so comfortable? Oh, perfectly, Henrietta. It's, it's just that I... Uh, I'm, uh... It's his yogurt position, ma'am. Yogurt? Mr. Topper can sit like that on his lotus all day. It's very relaxing, he says. Yes, of course. Oh, she means yoga. Selma just phoned from downtown. She's in a decorator shop and she wants our car keys. Henrietta, uh, I wish you'd think twice before you let Selma have the car again. She's a pretty poor risk, you know. She's been arrested three times for parking on the sidewalk. I think the poor dear needs glasses. She does charge about a good deal. Needs glasses? She couldn't hit a bull on the flank with a plate of spinach. She is clumsy and terribly absent-minded. Well, I'll be off, dear. Right, be home right, soon. Dear. Hey, wait a minute. I'll go with you. I just love decorator shop. <sighs> Selma, she's easily the most forgetful woman in the world. Next to Henrietta. What do you mean? Henrietta, wait, the keys. What 
do you mean you're going to repossess the furniture? The check was most definitely sent out. Must have been lost in the mail. Are you listening? You chipped me on a ten-piece modern drawing home street, and I paid for that. Don't you threaten me with a finance company. Mr. Charles, thank you so much for letting me use the telephone. With the local call? Oh, yes, yes. Oh. <laughs> thank you. Please, Miss Kinney, look where you're going. Oh, oh, oh I, I was just admiring your lovely furniture. Well, uh, perhaps you'd better just stay still. Oh, well, I'll, I'll be all right in, in a minute. <laughs> oh. 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 I, I came as quickly as I could. It's just me. I was looking at the chair in the window. That's odd. I know it's odd, but I thought maybe you would like it. Uh, Mr. Charles, uh, this is Henrietta, uh, Mrs. Topper. Uh, this is Mr. Charles, Mrs. Topper, uh, Henrietta, I mean. Mrs. Cosmo Topper, the wife of the banker? You know my husband? Only by reputation. I think it looks better from this angle. Excuse me. <laughs> Especially when Thelma's around. Your, your friend was just admiring my furniture. Such good taste. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, oh, well, oh. I Accidents will happen. <laughs> Mrs. Tabo, your house has been pointed out to me. It's charming. Oh, thank you. I suppose the interior is modern? Oh, uh, no, I, I'm afraid. So many people are afraid of the modern. It requires extremely refined taste. Oh, don't misunderstand me. I do like it. It's uh, quite nice. Uh, I think we'd better be going, Thelma. Uh, just a minute, Miss Kidney. You have given me the most wonderful idea. Yes. Mrs. Tupper, look at that. It's a fishnet, isn't it? Gloves and net, Mrs. Tupper. Oh, Miss Kidney, you have the instinctive sense of design. Oh, but I didn't mean to do that. How would you like to work for me? What a wonderful idea. Oh, she'd be a brilliant decorator. She has such good taste. I need an assistant. Please, won't you try this for a few days? Oh, I'd just love to, Mr. Charles. Thank you so much. I'm sure I could add a new touch here and there. <laughs> oh, what an interesting touch. Absolutely brilliant. <laughs> well, goodbye. <laughs> goodbye, Mr. Charles. Okay, okay. I'll go quietly. Oh, finance company. They will stop at nothing. <laughs> Cosmo, I'm home. Nice to see you, dear. And I brought a visitor. How much does that cost? Cosmo, look at me. I haven't changed a bit. Oh, hello, Thelma. This is Mr. Charles, Cosmo. Oh, now don't get up, Mr. Topper. Uh, the exercise will do me good. <laughs> Mr. Charles is an interior decorator. Thelma's going to work for him. I brought him to see our house. He's heard so much about it. Oh, yes? <laughs> Isn't it lovely, Mr. Charles? Mm, quite, yes. No, no, Mrs. Topper, this, uh, this is definitely not you. No, my wife has two legs. Oh, uh, no, what I meant, Mr. Topper, was that your wife strikes me as being more modern, more forward-looking, up-to-date. Not quite so uh, antique. No, she's remarkably well-preserved. Oh, no. No, Mrs. Tuttle. No, this is not you. Must be somebody. Perhaps it's me. Uh, Thelma, why don't you show Mr. Charles the ground? Oh, I'd love to. This way, Mr. Charles. I once saw a ten-piece modern drawing home suite. Oh, it would look just beautiful. Oh, Cosmo, I want you to be nice to Mr. Charles. I like him, and Thelma likes him. Oh, that makes it three to one. Huh? Well, you like him, Thelma likes him, he certainly likes himself. Mr. Charles is a very cultured man. And furthermore, I'm not so sure he's wrong. This room isn't really me. Who's the guy with Thelma? 
Oh, well, that's Mr. Well, Charles. He's an interior decorator. And what's he doing outside? Well, Thelma's going to work for him, and Henrietta's going to help her. And I'm going to help Henrietta. Well, you two? Mm-hmm. You know, I may do over this whole house. George, I, uh, I don't trust this Charles fella. What's the pitch, Chief? Oh, you know, the usual thing. Smooth talker, good salesman. Probably gets Henrietta and Thelma to bring in rich customers, then fleeces them. I, uh, I'd be awfully glad if you'd uh, keep an eye on him for me. Is this an assignment, Chief? Mm, I wouldn't do more than is absolutely necessary. Chief, have I ever failed you? Miserably and constantly. Well, you can't hit a bullseye every time. Come on, Neil. We'll decorate our interiors with a couple of martinis. Then we'll check in this interior decorator. <laughs> George, the first thing I'm going to do is change that window. What's the matter? Don't you like glass? No, I mean the inside. It needs more things inside. Well, I kind of like it the way it is. It's uh, powerful and stark. The customer? Well, he must have changed his mind. He must have changed it awfully fast. Sir Charles doesn't seem to have many customers. Brother, is this guy in hot? Hey, take this net, dear. I want you to help me fix the window before Mr. Charles comes back from lunch. Fix the window? Certainly, I'm going to make it look like a drawing room. For what, flounders? <laughs> I do hope we have some customers today. <laughs> what will these little display people think of next? Let's go outside and see how it looks. anybody here? Then how, how could all that furniture have disappeared? Oh, I don't know. Look, Henrietta. Oh, in the window. How do you like it? Is it me? It's insane. It's you. Your desire to do over the window has convinced me that you and the mother and were, were meant for each other. But, Mr. Charles, I didn't do over... Believe me, you have inherent good taste. Well, I... Mrs. Tupper, I, I really wish that you would live with it for a while, just to see if, if it does not fit your personality. I'm afraid Mr. Tupper wouldn't... Oh, but Mr. Tupper is an intelligent man, is he not? Uh, yes. Well, well... I can let you have a ten-piece modern drawing home suite at cost. But, uh, Mrs. Tupper, if a leading member of the community like yourself were to furnish her home in a new modern, break the ground, so to speak, pioneer, then the others will follow. And you will get all of the credit. Mm. <laughs> Henrietta, to be a pioneer... I do have a little money of my own. I could do it as a surprise for Cosmo. What a wonderful idea. <laughs> what do you think of it, Thelma? It's all right, I, I think. Won't Cosmo be surprised? Oh, yes, he'll be surprised, all right. You haven't gotten rid of the old furniture, have you? No, it's in the attic. Why do you ask? I just wondered where it went. It's Cosmo. 
come in, Cosmo, but close your eyes. Still there. Uh, what is? That furniture. It's a surprise. Well, that's clever. As you can play cards and watch the other fellow's feet at the same time. You must! After you've lived with it for a while. Yes, it's, it's so functional. So, so, uh, functional. Well, it's good for dropping things, too. Oh, of course, if you don't like it. You said I didn't like it. Uh, oh, Cosmo, try this chair. It's so comfortable. Oh. It, it's a chair. It fits any shape. Oh! oh. Perhaps I should be on my stomach. No, 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 don't help me. Don't help me. I, I can do it. I can do it. It oh. may take a little time, but I'll, but I'll do it. Goodness sake, Cosmo, let me help you. Don't let your pride go to your head. Why not? I can keep my blood company. Oh. Well, it's rather like being in traction, isn't it? Well, I guess I shall get used to it with a little practice. Well, what's next? <laughs> Henrietta, I, I was only joking. It's very comfortable. Oh, dear. I mean it. It's very comfortable. If you're a boa constrictor. No idea how comfortable the floor is until you tried one of these chairs. It's no use barking, Neil. It won't go away. I didn't have a thing to do with the top. Honestly, I didn't. It's a complete surprise to me. It was a surprise to me, too. You could have knocked me over with a feather. Very easily. <laughs> That's what that old for. Only we could send this stuff back without hurting Henrietta's feelings. What makes you think Charles would touch it? I told you he was a swindler. He owes everybody in town. Couldn't we just close the house and, and leave the furniture in it and sort of sneak out on it? We've got to get the money back some way. God knows. I just phoned Mr. Charles. Oh? He won't take the furniture back. But I thought you'd like this. I thought I did, too, but I don't. Oh, Cosmo. It's all my fault. If I hadn't left the keys in the car. No, dear, it's not your fault. I should never have... Uh, uh, how much did it cost? $3,000. But it's the only set of its kind. Oh, well, that's something. Oh, Cosmo, can you ever forgive me? Copper, I've got a wonderful idea. Not now. He'll forgive you later, won't you, Cosmo? Would you like to get rid of that furniture? Yes. You see? What did I tell you? Copper, I've got an absolutely foolproof scheme. There's only one trouble. You have to play a fool. But you can't back down now. All the work. But supposing he recognizes me. Why, your own wife wouldn't even recognize you. Look, you, you want to get rid of that furniture, don't you? And you want to get Henrietta's money back? Well, yes, but uh, look, there's only one thing you have to remember, and that is don't lose your French accent. All right, let's get it over with. Remember, we're right behind you. Good morning. Um, uh, Monsieur Charles? Oh, fast, Copper. He's on the lamb with the loot. Je suis Monsieur Charles. Vous désirez, Monsieur? Dépêchez-vous, s'il vous plaît. Je suis pressé. Uh, uh, I beg your pardon. Tell him to speak English. Uh, please, uh, speak uh, the English. When in Rome, we do as the Romans do you, no? Huh? No, what? Don't get carried away, old boy. You, uh, you speak English beautifully, Monsieur... Oh. Monsieur... Uh, Gallo. Monsieur Gallo. Pierre Gallo. Last month, when I passed your window, I see a chair. A so beautiful chair. Oh, I'm afraid it has been sold. He's afraid. Oh, you think he has went to so beautiful chair? I sold him only last week. 
maybe perhaps for me you can find for me like it another? There's something wrong with that last sentence. <laughs> oh, monsieur, it is too bad you did not come in last month. This chair was part of a ten-piece drawing home suite. Oh, ten-piece? Ten-piece? Why, life is a beautiful chair. Oh, for this I would have paid through the ear. Through the ear? His nose was stuffed up. <laughs> well, perhaps, monsieur, uh, perhaps there is a possibility I cannot guarantee anything, but maybe the people who own the furniture could be persuaded to sell it back. They could be persuaded to give it back. You think uh, maybe, perhaps, uh, yes? <laughs> I will call the gentleman. I'll bet you he's not in. What odds will you give me? Will you excuse me? Uh, please. Uh, in fact, I go with you. Oh, no, no, no. You will be much more comfortable here. Uh, no, no. Once I was in uh, foreign leisure. Uh, since then, I am comfortable any place. Very well. Oh, George, that was wonderful, isn't he? I wouldn't be surprised if he quit the bank and became a con man. <laughs> oh, Henrietta. <clears throat> Henrietta, go home. You, you gum everything up. Well, Mr. Charles. Uh, very well, thank you, Mrs. Stoutwell. Could you come back later? Uh, don't put me off. Uh, I phoned the factory that made that furniture, and I would have a talk with you. Well, I was just going to telephone you. Uh, why don't you go home and wait for my call? What are we going to do? Try and get Charles out of the store. Give me a chance to talk to Henrietta. Anything you have to say to me, you can say to my face. But I have a customer. I hope you're not cheating him. No, 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 no. We're treating him just fine. Now, why don't you walk around the block two or three times? Papa wants us to get rid of Charles. You mean do him in? No, get him out. That furniture didn't cost anything like Excuse me, I have a customer. I don't see anyone. What's more, it's so awful they've stopped making it. My busy day up. Uh, the factory says... i got to get that customer before he gets away. Well, I hope you don't get away, Mr. Charles. Put that here. Cosmo, what are you doing here? I told you she wouldn't recognize him. And how did you get that beard? Five o'clock shadow. Stop up! Mr. Cosmo, let me in. Proposed for repairs. We're opening next week with a brand new floor show. Let me in. You have been? She locked me up. <laughs> I don't see anything funny about it. No sense of humor. Have you, um, have you two met? Oh, oh we are just uh, meeting now. <laughs> He's a big help. Monsieur Gallo, would you mind waiting inside, please? I will take care of these ladies, then I will be right with you. Uh, au reservoir, mademoiselle. I, uh, I am so sorry that we do not meet longer. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Stopper, I have been thinking things over, and I have decided to take back the furniture. I'm not sure I want to give it back. But you said you did not like it. I know, but my husband does. I, uh, I would be willing to give you a slight profit. How slight? Shall we say, um, 3,500? 6,000. 6,000? 6,000. And not a cent death. Just a moment. Monsieur Gallo, how much would you be willing to pay for the furniture? You think you can get me for it? Oh, I feel reasonably sure. However, the people who own it have been uh, the price to it. I am, uh, I am prepared to pay $5,000. Oh, monsieur, I'm afraid they will require at least twice this amount. Very well, then I pay $10,000. Papa, that's a hard bargain. Voila. You win? $3,000 for the deposit. Merci, monsieur. Uh, excuse me a minute. Here is $3,000 in cash. I will make you out a check for the balance. Yeah, I don't understand this. Who is looking who? Very simple. Henrietta paid $3,000, Copper paid $3,000, and Charles paid $6,000. Ask yeah, me somebody's out $12,000. You're a mathematical genius. They're all even. Then why did we go to all this trouble? They want to stick Charles with the furniture. Oh. Oh. I will send for the furniture this afternoon. Uh, forgive me, mademoiselle. I, uh, I send you word where the furniture is to deliver. <laughs> and now, I if you please, I, I must go. <laughs> what an actress. I must go, too. Here, darling. Take these. 
George, I wonder what he's thinking. A John W. Lufton, Bernard L. Schubert production. Produced by John W. Lufton. Starring Ann Jeffries, Robert Sterling, and Leo G. Carroll. Thank <laughs> you.